My name is Natasha Bodrožić. I come from Zagreb, but originally from Trogir. I mean, I grew up there. And uh, I'm a curator and culture worker. And I'm here to present Motel Trogir project and Motel Trogir site as one of the team members. Uh, there are four people in, te in a team with me and uh, we have like dozens of uh, collaborators. So what is Motel Trogir uh, project? Uh, first of all, uh, Motel Trogir project started a citizen's initiative and a public campaign for preservation of architectural modernist heritage from the period of socialist Yugoslavia. Focus specially on the Adriatic motels designed by the architect Ivan Vitic. Today, it signifies a wider platform and consists of several parts. Research, uh, publishing, preservation campaign, advocacy and the art project. The project is conceived within the program of Slobodne Veze, Loose Association's Contemporary Art Practices in Zagreb. So that's the project and what is uh, Motel Trogir as a site that you could uh, see before and now, parts of it. Uh, Motel Trogir, originally Motel Sljeme, is a derelict bu building situated in south of Croatia uh, on the eastern Adriatic coast uh, at the entrance of the town of Trogir, 27 kilometers from Split. And it was built in 1965 by the renowned architect Ivan Vitic, one of the key names of Croatian, actually Yugoslav architectural modernism. It is the starting point of the project and, as you can see, uh, the site of the action, especially artistic action, but uh, research and everything. So, uh, what I've noticed from the presentation from before is that all of us are doing some kind of um, research uh, for the so-called delayed audience, for future audience, but actually future is not coming and we are all stuck in present. And we are keep doing this um, for, uh, I, I don't know, uh, using our own research, resources, uh, uh, like doing stuff, what institution should have been done, um, and uh, somehow exploiting ourselves. Uh, and uh, considering uh, Breda's uh, remark that uh, artistic uh, interventions are easy to do uh, because they are cheap, they, they cost nothing, that's actually not good practice that we use um, artists, not use, but that we somehow make artists do something without a fee. Uh, as a curator, I have to um, stress this moment. <laughs> so, um, I would like to start with something uh, which I uh, think is very important when, um, when uh, I want to uh, defer pro Project Motel Trogir from other uh, projects uh, of this um, profile, let's say. Uh, I would like to start uh, this presentation by a quote by Walter Benjamin, which would serve as an introduction to our project and to this presentation. And the quote is beautiful, it goes like this. To articulate what is past does not mean to recognize how it really was. It means to take control of a memory as it flashes in a moment of danger. The quote is very important in this very moment when the new wave of the historic revisionism take over the memory and remembrance with a, such a strength all, all, all across post-socialist world. It slowly becomes institutionalized through education, legal acts or power structures, such as, for example, the Ministry of Culture, just to mention very recent, a very close and very extreme example of revisionism in Croatia. The Minister of Culture himself, historian by profession, uh, negates, uh, denies the anti-fascism and liberation movement in Croatia, uh, which was part of Yugoslavia at the time before the Second World War, as it was, the resistance was organized and led by the Communist Party of Yugoslavia and Marshal Tito. So, the Minister of Culture of Croatia today says that uh, anti-fascism is an empty word. In short, culture and the production of the knowledge as part uh, of it is battlefield of different hegemonies. Thus, the question of the relation to words and the interpretation of the Yugoslav history is naturally a political affair par excellence. No matter if we are talking about book publishing, exhibition making, defining new heritage or something else. The recent trend of historization of various dim dimensions of spatial and physical development of the socialist Yugoslavia has its ideological and political function as well. 
Even the, in the case of uh, interpreting Yugoslav history through the lens of the modernist paradigm, which places Yugoslavia in line with the so-called civilized societies of the West and showcasing specific architectural typology as a historical artifact of the global relevance. This also has its ambiguities. When the demands for conservation of this particular modernist architectural heritage comes from organizations such as UNESCO or DOCOMOMO, this demand falls on the existing discursive matrix of the already mentioned historic revisionism. This again throws us on the ground of current political or ideological battles over the questions of Yugoslav heritage. In other words, the conservation of the architectural modernist heritage is at the same time conservation of the historical memory. How do we interpret this heritage and conserve it in the today's institutional framework of the post-conflict crisis management, which promotes only certain topics and contents and ways of, ways of their treatment? That is the biggest question for the researcher today, for us in the Motel project. And, uh, in this, because of all this, we should be uh, activists trying to break through the wall of revisionism growing everywhere from academia to the media. Uh, when I, I mean, we can, we can discuss about this later if you have questions and um, what, what this means. Actually, when I now even put this modernist uh, paradigm in question uh, in, in terms of uh, somehow trying to interpret Yugoslav, uh, soci socialist Yugoslav heritage, in correlation with the developed West, in a way denying our own history and uh, be, becoming some kind of ahistorical people before the democratic changes, I'm putting this in question. Um, so, Motel Trogir uh, project, now I will, I will tell you a little bit about the site. Uh, it's in relation uh, with car culture uh, and Adri Adriatic Highway. So Motel Trogir was built in 1965 at the western entrance of Trogir town. Today it is in derelict state due to the criminal privatization of what once was societal ownership. Let me remind you that Yugoslavia didn't have state ownership but societal ownership, which was in between state, uh, based actually in, in relation with workers' self-management uh, that was uh, uh, set in Yugoslavia. Uh, and uh, it's, there, it's in derelict state, um, and uh, privatization was criminal, uh, and uh, this happened with the motel, like privatization, in the mid of the 90s. Two subjects today are claiming ownership, and uh, they are stuck in a decade-long court battle with no solution on the horizon. Uh, this is because there is no uh, contract of succession, I think, between Croatia and Bosnia and Bosnia was the owner, actually Bosnian company was one of the owner of the motel. Uh, the motel was built in parallel to the Adriatic Highway. It was opened only one day after its official, official inauguration, which happened also in Trogir. Uh, it was envisaged as one of the performative elements which would fit within the utopian vision of the highway, imagined as a feature film unfolding on the traveler's windscreens. The construction of the Adriatic Highway from pre preparatory activities in 1955 until its opening in 1965 forever changed the Cro Croatian, actually at the time Yugoslav, coastal area. The following year, the number of tourists which had used the new uh, road to visit the coastline more than doubled. Ever since, tur tourism would remain the main driving force of the development of the coastline. If we take into consideration that the two popular objects of desire at that time in the mid-60s were the car and the television set, the expectations according to which the highway should accumulate in its entire length distinctive contents so as to create a kind of continuing city al along with the ones that, uh, that from the psychological and aesthetic standpoint, the Adriatic Highway should be designed as a feature-length film to be presented on the screen of the car window for the traveler's maximum enjoyment during the journey, they are not in the least surprising. The Trogir Motel consists of several distinctive buildings. Um, and um, uh, it's, uh, they are uh, placed within a def definite and clear orthogonal system the main building is the uh, reception building with a restaurant and its external roof terrace. The first floor on which bedrooms are located was accessible 
by an external uh, steel stairway. The terrace of its ground floor restaurant is connected to a single story annex by means of an outdoor walkway, which is in a communication link with another, though differently shaped two story annex. The standalone six pavilions have been placed south of the structures. The pavilions are distinct, they uh, have been excluded from the system of pedestrian walkways and provided with parking spots between individual units. Anyway, uh, I'm really insisting uh, so that you, uh, that you see the, the images because um, one of the key elements actually is to, to preserve the form of the motel uh, because actually um, with the vanishing and disintegration, uh -huh. uh, with the disintegration of these forms, actually the um, uh, very specific knowledge based on actually different epistemological background that, than the one of today's is, the, is disappearing as well. So um, this is the motel from the time it was working. As you can see, uh, it, uh, it was very important only till the um, beginning of the 70s uh, when another big uh, hotel was built in the area. So actually it changed the owner uh, already then, uh, but it uh, kept somehow working and hosting uh, guests. Plus it had a very important role for the community of Trogir because uh, it hosted, I don't know, dance evenings, um, concerts, uh, etc. Uh, in the 90s, uh, there was a, during war in Yugoslavia, refugees were, um, were placed there. And after this, uh, of course, uh, because of the, they used it as for living, everyday living, of course, the place started to um, change and deteriorate. Um, by that time, uh, as I said, the privatization happened and then um, this was the end because uh, two uh, people that are battling on court, they are somehow battling on site too. Uh, and uh, it, although it seems nice like this with our images, uh, even the visit to the place uh, somehow gives you creeps. You should visit and uh, see. I'm encouraging people to uh, get in and uh, see and film and document because somehow one of the strategies uh, is to multi multiply the, the image of the site. Um, so, in this presentation, I will just try to uh, give you a brief over overview of the activities of uh, our extensive civil campaign, its strategies and tactics, uh, as we are dealing here with a complex problem. From one side, we are trying to reaffirm some principles of the good space making, research, research uh, and uh, defining the new heritage, and uh, in the same time, something that we call producing the public. Uh, the Motel Trogir project started in 2013 as a raising awareness effort and public discussion about the destiny of the site, left to the decay, as already said, uh, due to criminal privatization. Um, uh, so, meanwhile, it was left uh, to decay, as I said, and somehow uh, we came there first time very um, innocently, like not really knowing what uh, uh, is happening there. We just th thought it's architectural masterpiece, it's not known, it's uh, in, decay, in decay, let's save it. But what we found uh, there, as I said, is quite a dangerous situation. So somehow um, we use uh, this kind of uh, art strategies and, uh, and uh, all these nice things, image making and uh, collaboration with, uh, with the international manifestations of art in a way to uh, give a new life to the quite uh, problematic and, uh, uh, and sick place, I would say. Uh, so when we started, we started from scratch. The motel was absolutely unknown, except in the narrow expert circles and of architects and art historians. During following four years, the motel Trogir became referential point for these problematics problematics of uh, preservation of architectural modernism from the socialist uh, Yugoslavia. Uh, it acts as a, a smaller and locally oriented Dokomomo section, just more political. Um, uh, what I wanted to say, I, I'm lost a little bit in these uh, images and all this, 
So uh, I want to say that actually this uh, project of ours uh, consists, uh, I think the most important uh, part of it is the research part, in which we are tackling very, very um, uh, problematic and uh, uh, stigmatized period uh, between 1945 and 1990. Uh, it's uh, problematic and stigmatized because of the historic revisionism that, that uh, is taking place everywhere, as I said. And um, we are trying to um, somehow um, take control of uh, telling the history about uh, these uh, places. And uh, we published recently our first book, uh, which uh, is called Motel Trogir. It is not future that always comes after. It is actually the reference to the Slovenian, um, to the to the text of Slovenian poet and theorist Miklaus Komel, who is reference, uh, referencing uh, Yugoslav poet Branko Milković, who is referencing Tito's speech from the 50s, a very good dia dialectical one. So um, after uh, this uh, book, uh, in which we somehow um, um, uh, tried to tell the story of the motel in, in some, some sort uh, of battling with the revisionism. You, you sometimes uh, can't even deal with this. Um, uh, so we have a little bit uh, a view on uh, Yugoslavia from the 60s, from the historian uh, Tvrtko Jakovina. Then we have the story of a motel in Trogir, of the second motel from the series in Rijeka. And then we have a quest, uh, like a chapter on um, uh, problems of, uh, of um, using actually uh, the conservative methods of uh, conservation for somehow uh, protecting progressive ideas in space, etc., etc. The, the book is uh, sold out. We are very happy that somehow this, um, this topic found, uh, found uh, interest also in uh, uh, not just in the post-socialist uh, uh, world, but also in uh, Western Europe. Um, uh, and um, I don't know, uh, I, I don't know what would I tell you more. Uh, if you have question, maybe it's better to continue that way. Yeah, maybe about art project. Uh, the art project is part of the strategy of multiplying image of the site because we can't do, mu uh, we can't do much on the terrain. We can't do uh, much about uh, long uh, court uh, uh, battles. We can't do much about uh, physical danger in, in space between the two owners. So we decided to somehow create the myth of the place, um, creating more and more uh, documentary and fictional narrative about the place. And uh, this is uh, where we place our uh, art project, in fact. So we are connected with the biennial of uh, young artists from uh, Europe and Mediterranean, and we are already 30 years organizing a research residency, trying to, um, try, uh, trying to somehow take over the narrative uh, and uh, the story uh, that uh, explains this, uh, this 45, 90, uh, after uh, socialist Yugoslavia period. So, um, we just had one uh, residency now. We went to see all these amazing places that uh, some of you already know because they were all around the place, such is, uh, such is Krvavica Children Health Resort that I will show you just now. Um, in this relation, uh, I mean, I have to tell that it's a very good moment for this um, architecture that um, because in, at, at present time, a lot of knowledge is being accumulated about the architecture and the period. So uh, several books were published in Croatia uh, dealing with, um, with uh, certain architects of the period, then our book, uh, and uh, especially a widely spread uh, TV series called Slumbering Concrete, uh, Betonski Spavaci, that you can download, I think even from the internet today. Um, of course, this is the first wave of uh, knowledge production about this, so uh, I I'm sure some second generation will, will uh, be more critical about this and find also re a revisionist a revisionism uh, in, in this kind of first interpretations. But um, somehow we, we, do the we do the best we can, uh, although compromising, of course, because uh, 
project needs to uh, have funds and we do really a lot and uh, somehow we are lucky that the uh, uh, Ministry of Culture of Croatia and uh, Kultura Nova Foundation is supporting project uh, continuously. Uh, what I forgot to mention is that our project has uh, a specific uh, results because, uh, because of our campaign, the motel in Trogir is uh, officially protected. That means it has a status as a Renaissance uh, cathedral in Trogir, just that it's, it's in this state. Uh, we also managed actually the conservation office in Rijeka, uh, managed uh, to protect uh, a, second, a second motel from the same author because it was in a series. Um, mostly based on our uh, material that we produced uh, during the campaign. And uh, I have to say that this motel in Rijeka is the first uh, uh, ever uh, building built after Second World War that got protected, uh, that got the, actually the, the status of the Monument of Culture. Uh, in, uh, in Rijeka area, uh, that's the first one. So, I don't know, uh, here on images you see a little bit uh, uh, images of Split 3, which uh, you have on display now in Museum of Architecture, in the exhibition Streets and Neighborhoods that I have to see these days. Um, and uh, this is all uh, in relation to our tours and uh, art project that we are continuously doing. That would be all. If you have questions, I think I got a little bit mixed up. Yeah, no, it's okay, but uh, you didn't get mixed up. No. Yeah, I, did, I didn't sleep a lot, and I was at the seaside yesterday, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, but, um, I mean, what is the relationship of the broader public um, towards functionalist, modernist architecture in Croatia? How, how, can you repeat? How, how, do, how do people in Croatia see this kind of art? Uh, like, uh, like in Georgia, like in Armenia, like in uh, Russia, I suppose. Uh, it's all because of this uh, new uh, revisionist wave and the liberal paradigm. Uh, liberal paradigm in the sense that uh, like um, modernization and mo modernism is being inter interpreted only through liberal paradigm. Uh, like we left the Marxist uh, paradigm totally and now we are stuck in this. So what, um, what the people in, of Trogir uh, say about this building is that it's the scarecrow of the city, but uh, mostly because uh, it's in this state, I suppose. But I have to say that, and this is the best part, I think, of the project, is that we are trying to um, create some kind of uh, emotional relation to this. People in Trogir, really in the bars, when we when we come to this small town, empty in winter, because uh, it lives only from tourism and exploitation of its Renaissance and medieval history. So when we come in the local bar and we found three, find three people there, they see us there. We they know uh, who we are a little bit already now, and then they talk in between uh, each other like, oh wow, this is this Ivan Vitic architect. You know, this motel is really important. It's amazing that it's here. So I think the the uh, somehow view is um, shifting, yeah, a little bit, but, yeah. but... I find, yeah, I find it interesting, but also problematic, that you, that you actually do connect um, particular architecture to particular ideology, because I think um, it has nothing to do with this. I'm very sorry that I don't have the image <laughs> to show you what, uh, what uh, came uh, what uh, appeared a few weeks ago across the motel. It, this is new architecture, super generic uh, shopping mall that takes a part of Adriatic Highway even without one tree, anything. And then uh, in, across the street it's motel. And then if, if it's not ideology who, which is uh, dictating the architecture and the urbanism, I would ask why there are no uh, more places uh, that somehow in incorporate emptiness uh, are organized around the square or something like this. But especially in the uh, south of Cro Croatia, when actually the space is the only asset we have. I mean, uh, the, in these three uh, waves of privatization, first uh, uh, factories, second banks, now it's only the space that we are dealing with. So yes, ideolo ideology is fixed with space. It produces the space. 